What's up everybody, it's AJ with eTrader.com. Today we're going to be checking out the Seaflow Bilge Pump. Now this one has 1100 GPH, which is gallons per hour. I know I'm spitting numbers at you, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so let's just show it in action. We're going to turn it on. It's going to help you get that excess water out of your boat. So let's say you leave your boat uncovered, or you launch your boat and forget to put the plug in. You're going to find out pretty quick there's water coming in there. This pump, once you flip the switch, is going to get that water out of there real quick. We got it in a 10 gallon tank right now. You can watch how quickly it's getting rid of this water. And that's how much it's going to help you in your boat. We're about at the end here. This is a switch based one, so you'll wire it up to a switch to turn it on and off. It won't be automatic, but you can get an attachment that's a float switch that you can wire in there with it so that when the water rises, the switch activates as it goes up then it would kick on on its own and turn off on its own. Let's take a closer look. We're gonna take off the filter so we can see the fan at the bottom. The filter's a nice addition because it helps keep any like big leaves or anything from getting in there and stopping up the fan. That way it won't be able to pump water. So as long as this is on there, it just keeps all that stuff on the outside and nothing ever reaches the fan, which that's gonna draw in all the water and pump it out the side here, the side tube. Now this is things you need to think about. If you're replacing your current bilge pump that went out, you probably already have the hose run, you just need to attach this one in right in line. If you're adding to the bilge pump, adding a second one to your boat, you're going to want to buy the bilge pump hose separate because it doesn't come with it. And I would recommend getting this hose clamp as well and maybe some heat treat bunk connectors so when you go to do the wiring you can make sure that's sealed and the water won't get to it. Now I showed you the switch base one but I wanted to show you what it looked like with an auto bilge pump. I'll take the filter off again. This is that switch there. So when the water rises, it's going to lift up that switch and activate the pump. As the water lowers and the water gets pumped out, it's going to drop down here and then shut off the pump. You don't have to have it hooked up to a switch, you don't have to keep an eye on it, you can turn it on and off as you want. And it's also used as a safety measure with the auto one, because if you hear water come out of the side of your boat, you know you got excess water somewhere and it's automatically taking care of it. We have a bunch of different bilge pumps, let's go ahead and compare these to the other ones. Here's the plan. We're going to pour 10 gallons into this container. And we're going to do that with every bilge pump to make sure we have the same amount of water and then we can time it and see how quick it takes to pump it out. First up is the 500 gallons per hour. This is going to be the slowest one we have, but the smallest one. So if you have a smaller boat, you don't maybe have the room to put the bigger 2,000 gallon per hour one in there, this one's going to work for you just fine. Next up is the 750 gallons per hour. This one's gonna be a little faster, but the unique thing on this one is this is an automatic bilge pump. So once it hits the water, it's gonna activate, and once it gets all the way down, it's gonna shut itself off. Stop. Now we're going to test out the 1100 GPH bilge pump. This one's a non automatic, so it's switch based, but you're going to see quite a big difference from the last one. Done. Now this one's going to be the same 1,100 GPH, but this one's going to be automatic. So again, you'll see it activate once it hits the water and then shut off once it gets to the bottom. Done. 
done. Now we're going to test out the 2000 GPH build pump. As I drop this one in there, it activates right away because it's automatic and you're going to see it's going to take down the water pretty quick. Done. So that's pretty cool to see them right in a row and they actually do make a big difference. They don't just have the numbers on there for no reason. Our lowest one, our 500, was 50 seconds and the highest one at 2000 was 22 seconds. So that's a big difference and we saw that change with each one we used. One thing I will note though is the sound sure didn't change too much. They sounded about the same, especially when it was submerged in water. Of course it gets noisier when there's no water. You can hear it right before it shuts off. But most of these are going to be down, tucked away somewhere in your boat. So they're not going to be like right in front of the steering wheel in your face. You're barely going to hear it when it's going in your boat, pumping that water out. One of the biggest differences for me is the switch based ones versus the ones that have that auto switch. You can see again, as this water raises up, it'll lift this up and engage it. I think that's just a better way to go about it. I have to worry about flipping the switch or what if I forgot to do it, then the back of my boat floods. Once this starts going up, it's gonna pump that water out. That way it never builds up on you. Whichever one you go with, it's gonna get the job done. We saw that they just go a little bit faster. It's way better than using a manual pump or a bucket. I'd much rather have this do the work for me. I think that does it for our look at these bilge pumps. Hope that helped.